All right, now that we're looking great. Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're testing out some super, super hyped products. The Anastasia Dip Brow Gel, the Urban Decay Brow Blade, Anastasia Riviera Palette, and then the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. So lots of new things. These things have been all over the place. Um, super, super hyped up. Um, and everyone's been using them and talking about them. Most of this is not first impressions. I have used most of these products for the past couple weeks. Um, the exception is the Hydro Grip Primer that we're doing a first impressions and a wear test on. Um, but the other stuff I have been using and I'm just gonna kind of give you my thoughts, show you how to get this super creative, um, pretty colorful look. And yeah, if you wanna see how to get this look and if you wanna know my thoughts on these new products, then just keep watching. Um, Mm. All right, got my coffee brewing. I haven't had any yet. I meant to start this video mm, three hours ago, but it's okay, we're here now. All right, so the first product I wanna talk about is the Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. All right, this is what she looks like. Cute little gold packaging. We have a nice little wand here. A little bit bigger than like say the Milk Kush Brow or Boy Brow, but still smaller than your average brow gel. So this product is essentially like if you took Dip Brow and melted it and then put it in a tube and gave it a brush. And like the first time you use this, it's like, hmm, was that a good idea? Then like once you get used to it, you're like, hmm, this is actually pretty nice. And I will say that like, Literally every time I've worn this, I've worn this probably two or three times, I've gotten compliments on my brows. So I think that I like the end result. The application process is a little bit tricky because it just kind of like gets everywhere. You, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So anyways, I'm gonna zoom you guys in and show you how this applies. I have this weird dry patch on my eyeball. It like comes and goes. I don't know what's going on. It's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little brush and I'm just gonna start going in. You can see like how pigmented this is. This is not for if you want a like soft, subtle brow. And you see how I'm not pressing that hard. Do you see how it's just everywhere? Anyways, let's do that to the other side. And like you could be a little more careful with this, I guess, but it's just, it's so easy to get it everywhere. So if you are like a diehard um, brows after foundation type of person, I don't think this is gonna be a good product for you. All right, so now that we're looking great, um, I'm gonna take a little makeup wipe. I'm gonna take my makeup wipe and just kind of go around. I don't think that concealer would be sufficient to clean up this mess we've made. All right, I'm kind of using upward strokes because I don't want to create like a harsh line or anything because we're going for like a fluffy brow, but I just want to remove the excess. Now that our brows are a little more cleaned up, I'm gonna take a spoolie and I'm going to brush the crap out of my eyebrows. All right, see how we're nice and messed up again? I'm gonna take that makeup wipe All right, so you can see with just that gel, we did get some very sort of thick, full eyebrows, but it's definitely a lot. All right, so this is what we got going on right now, and then we're gonna go in with our next hype product. All right, next up is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. So this is a dual-ended thing. On one side, we've got this nice little brush tip here. And on the other side, we have more of a traditional brow pencil. I absolutely adore this little guy. Um, the pencil formula, the like actual pencil is amazing. It's creamy, but it's not too creamy. It glides on just like the perfect amount of product. Um, the only thing I don't like is the color and that is the one thing like throughout this whole line that is just a little bit off. A lot of them pull like super, super warm, which is not good for eyebrows. This one is the shade taupe and I don't know if it pulls so much warm 
as it has kind of a like greenish tint almost, especially for a brow shade that's labeled taupe that is pretty warm. So you can't really use the pencil on its own because the color is just off and I've heard that's kind of the same for all the other colors too. Um, but mixed with the, um, if you put the ink stain over it, the color looks normal. But I just, I think that they need to tweak their colors. Today I'm gonna to show you the ink stain because I don't like to use the pencil when I have the dip brow gel in. So I'm gonna show you how to use the ink stain. I've used uh, one from Catrice like this for a while. This one I like even more. I think the tip is a little finer. I need to elongate this brow a little bit. So I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just going to, from the outside edge, draw little bitty hair strokes. And this is gonna create the illusion of a nice fluffy brow. I'm also gonna go in where I have a little bit of a gap here. Now the trick with this is you don't wanna overdo it because then they'll all kind of blend together. That's about the amount you wanna do. You can go in and kind of darken at the root a little bit if you want. But that's about all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a spoolie again, just a clean spoolie. And I'm gonna brush these hairs up. I'm gonna see if there's any more places where I want a little more color. So like, again, this gap right here, pretty much it. We got our little eyebrow. Um, now we're gonna go on to the other side and this side doesn't need as much color fill in, um, but we do wanna elongate this brow a little bit too. And again, we're just a little bit way too much. And I'm just gonna go on the outer edge once again, and create those little, little itty bitty hair strokes. So I'm gonna go a little bit up here too. I try not to overdo it with this part because then it looks a little, a little wee bit insane. Another thing too is I don't really go do anything in the front part of my brow. Um, you can if you want to, um, but I find it looks just a little more like natural when I just have the gel in there. So I'm gonna take my Alpha Clear Brow Gel and I'm just going to shellac these puppies in place. You can see I have a decent amount of fullness towards the front of my brow, so that's another reason why I don't fill in too much because I don't want it to look too harsh. And honestly, you could probably use less product than I did in the beginning, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to overdo it with this product. All right, and there you have your dip brow gel brow blade eyebrows. So on days where I don't use the dip brow gel because it can be a bit intense, um, I'll just go in with the Urban Decay brow blade. I'll do the pencil first and then the... Um, little hair strokes with the pen. Sometimes I'll keep it more defined. Sometimes I will do a more fluffy brow and then set it with the clear brow gel. Just kind of depends on your preference. Um, I do really recommend this product if you can find a color that works for your brows. Um, just keep in mind some of them pull really, really warm. So if you have really cool toned hair, this might not work for you. Um, so anyways, uh, Urban Decay, please change your colors because I don't know what's happening there, but the product itself, the formula, phenomenal. Uh, next up, we have a very hyped product, which I'm quite excited about. So like I said, most of these stuff isn't first impressions, um, neither is this palette. I've been using it for about a week now. I adore, I, I love this palette. I'm sure you've seen this palette a million times. This is what the color story looks like absolutely gorgeous you have these deep all right cool you have these absolutely gorgeous colors and then some neutrals and yeah it's a pretty little palette uh this is what the front looks like very nautical the formula of anastasia's shadows is just like top notch every single shimmer in here is absolutely gorgeous look at that fucking color payoff, ugh. All of the mattes are super pigmented, but they blend so easily. All of the shimmers are that like high impact metallic, um, and like all of them are like that. The only matte I haven't tried 
is this guy estate right here and i don't i'm not that excited about this shade one thing i will say is i feel like this palette is missing like a deep sort of like sapphire blue or like royal blue something like that because you have these kind of beautiful blue tones here so i feel like i could have done without this shade estate um because you can definitely use cabana and coastline with a light hand if you're fair skinned as like a transition shade and i feel like this shade isn't going to be used by a lot of people so i feel like if they had replaced this with like a deep blue i think that would be an excellent idea at first i also thought that this palette would be more suited for a black rather than a dark brown but i actually used the dark brown for like a more kind of neutral bronzy look the other day and i quite liked it so i think that it definitely works and there's other blacks i have in my collection so yeah i think this is a really beautiful palette i do think it's worth the hype i think that it was very smart of them to sort of release this along with their whole while doing their whole pr search because i think a lot of people bought it for that reason which i completely understand but Regardless, it's a beautiful, beautiful palette. If you're looking for something colorful that is like still easy to work with, if that makes sense, um, it's not gonna be like the James Charles Morphe palette, which I don't have that palette, but that one is like pure pigment. This one, um, are they're extremely pigmented, but they still blend super, super easily. So I think this is a great little co colorful palette. It's a great introductory to color, I think. I have the day off today. I don't have anything to do, so I wanna do something very um, like colorful and um, just creative, and I'm just really excited to be able to do that. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in, and we're gonna do that. All right, for primer, I'm gonna do a little bit of my Urban Decay uh, Primer Potion in Eden. I do think these shadows perform best with a like semi-tacky base, but if you're wanting a more sort of like pastel or softer look, then you can um, set your base. I do find that these shadows show up really well on multiple different skin tones. I've used it on a couple of clients at work with deeper skin tones and it showed up beautifully. I wanna do some pink like right up here and then do kind of a line, like a white line and then do kind of a winged out with this beautiful um, blue shade right here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I've not used the brush in here yet. It doesn't feel particularly appetizing, but maybe I will use it for the sake of using it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with Coastline, this peachy shade here. Okay, this brush is absolute garbage. No, thank you. I don't know why brands put in those cheapy little brushes in with palettes. Like, we're not gonna use them. I'm gonna take my little It Cosmetics blending brush. It's my fave little, fave little blender. But I'm excited. I haven't done like a super creative look in so long. I just haven't had the time because every time I do my makeup, I'm like getting ready for work or, you know, we're going somewhere or something. And I just, you know, one, don't have time to do a super creative look. And also like, I don't want to be stared at because I'm awkward. I'm gonna take this little angled uh, brow brush and I'm gonna take Bahamas, the super bright pink. I adore this shade. And I'm gonna create kind of a line I do find this shade does stain the eye a little bit. So fair warning if you are also translucent. All right, I'm gonna take my little brow brush and I'm going to flick this up. I'm gonna take this side. I feel like this side might work a little better because it's supposed to be a little more dense. And I take a little bit of the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer, and this line is fairly well defined. I more want to create a base for the white shade that we're gonna place down. All right, well that's still kind of tacky. I'm gonna take that bright white shade, uh, Sails, right here. Pat that on. You could also use like a white liner for this. I don't really have one that I love, so now. I'm gonna take this beautiful blue shade right here. It's called Seash Seashells. Seash 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 That, that, that. 
All right, I'm gonna take that blue shade. I wanna create kind of a winged out shape. So I'm just gonna start by creating a wing. So I'm gonna take that seashell shade on a little flat brush. You see how these, like, this is a dry brush. And I'm just like, do you see? that pigment. I think I am gonna do a winged liner. I think it's really gonna tie this look together or completely ruin it, we'll see. What if I should tap, like mesmerize over this blue? I feel like it'd be pretty, or not mesmerize, Mediterranean. It's like this really gorgeous kind of like duochrome -y almost type shade. Digging this look, guys. I'm excited about it. I think I am going to tap a little bit of Mediterranean. It's this shade right here. It's this beautiful like duochrome. It's a little more sheer than the other shadows, but it gives this like really pretty reflex. Should I add a winged liner? That's the question. I think I will. Just gonna draw a line. Don't be scared of it. In an effort to use every single color in the palette, I'm also gonna do some of that purple on the lower lash line. I'm gonna take that purple shade, uh, Kane's Kans. I'm so sorry about mispronouncing everything. I will say these shadows are a bit loose, so if you pick them up with your finger, they might be a little crumbly. Um, so I like to pick them up with a brush instead, and you still get like, as you saw, the super intense color payoff. All right, I'm gonna just go underneath here. I'm gonna take a uh, coastline again, and I'm just going to run that on the lower lash line. A lot of people don't like like orange and purple combinations. I actually think it's quite pretty. It's very like sunsetty, you know. And then, last but not least, I want to pop some of that silver shade on the inner corner. I think that would be really pretty. Um, it kind of give a whole new like editorial look to this. Look. So I'm going to take this silver shade, the shade Seaside, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm just going to take a little brush. Again, my brush is dry. And I'm just going to pop that right there. I don't know, something about the little silver I like. I'm going to take Sails and kind of go along the outer edge just to lighten and brighten. I'm gonna go do mascara and pop on a real big pair of lashes and I think that, um, yeah, we'll be done with this little look. I feel like so much has happened because it took approximately eight years to apply these lashes. I popped a little of that blue in my waterline too, which I feel like was maybe not the best idea because I think it made my eyes water a little bit, but it's okay, we're here. Anyways, I'm really feeling this look. I'm so happy I got to do something a little more creative. Let me know if you'd like to see a dedicated video on this palette um, and do a couple maybe a little bit more wearable looks, but still like colorful, um, like two or three looks or something like that with this palette because I think that would be really fun. I love the looks I've created with this so far. All right, it is now time to test out the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. This is what she looks like, kind of cool, green, very milk-like packaging. This primer is supposed to be a little bit sticky. It's also supposed to give some hydration and give kind of a like dewy type look. I know they did like a whole brand trip. It's been like everywhere um, that was like kind of specifically to promote this product. So it's really, really been hyped up. Um, to me, this seems similar to the Cover Effects, the gripping primer that they released recently. Um, I, I got a sample of it and I love that one. Um, it's really sticky, it really holds your makeup on. I like it mixed with like their dewy primer. This one doesn't seem as sticky, um, so I'm interested to kind of see how it holds up throughout the day. Um, I've heard kind of mixed 
things about this product so I'm gonna try excited to try it out myself I am happy about this sort of trend that brands are doing where they're releasing gripping primers uh, long-lasting primers that are not uh, super mattifying or drying which is something I feel like we really needed in the market I think brands are kind of realizing that we want more hydrating products um, across the board because there's so much mattifying stuff out there and first of all there's a lot of people that have dry skin not everyone has oily skin and even people with oily skin don't always want a super matte look so anyways i'm gonna stop rambling and i'm gonna put this on my face zoomed you in just a tiddly bit um so i'm gonna take a decent size pump oh we're gonna do a half face for this i think that's gonna be the best option uh that's usually how i test out primers so i'm just gonna kind of lather this on I used a pretty healthy amount that seems like the best way to go with this primer definitely feels a bit sticky it has almost like a cooling effect oh by the way I did the normal skin prep I've been doing earlier this morning I did the drunk elephant version marula and the umbra sheer physical defense sunscreen my skin does feel nice and tacky. It's not like overly sticky though. I feel like it maybe gave a little bit of a glow, but definitely not anything crazy. I don't think it's anything that you would be able to see through foundation. I'm gonna test it out with the um, with the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid because I don't know, my skin's going through it a little bit. I want a little bit of full coverage and this will give us a good idea of how the primer works because I'm familiar with how this one wears. All right, so I'm just gonna dot this. Oh god, on my face. It's the shade creme. Alright, I'm gonna take my little beauty blender and just pat, 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 pat. Right off the bat, I'm noticing some weird things happening. So I feel like the foundation is almost applying a little bit patchy on this side. Whereas you can see this side looks nice and smooth. And I feel like it's like sticking to the primer in ways that I don't necessarily want it to. Okay, it is smoothing out a little bit as I keep blending. I do feel like it looks a little more dewy on this side than it does this side. This side looks a little more matte. I do feel like, again, you have to work kind of fast over top of this primer or else it will stick down in certain areas but I don't mind the way that it's looking so far. So I'm gonna call the check-in time um, 1.15. Wee bit of a late start. I'm gonna try to keep this on until at least like 10, nine or 10 or something like that. So good eight or nine wear test. All right, so I'm not 100% sure how I'm feeling about this one right now. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I will be back. All right, and we're back. My makeup is done, and I also did my hair and uh, threw on some clothes. Well, a shirt. Anyways, I think that my thoughts on the primer have changed just a little bit. I actually feel like the primer side does look more skin-like and a little bit more glowy. So this is the no primer side. Obviously, I put on a highlight, I put on a cream blush, so I wanted to look dewy today. But this is what the no primer side looks like, and this is what the primer side looks like. So I actually feel like it does look a little more skin-like. So as of right now, I wouldn't necessarily buy this primer just to get a super dewy, glowy look. I feel like I have other products that do better. Um, the Cover Effects Dewy Primer is great if you want a super dewy look. However, I feel like this primer might be good for somebody who wants a little bit of a glow, um, but not too much, you know? Um, or maybe like you have oily skin or combo skin, so you don't want to be feel, you don't want to feel greasy, um, but you do want a little bit of a glow. I do think that um, you can achieve that with this primer but I wouldn't say it's necessarily like a super glowy primer, if that makes sense. I think the real um, test here is going to be to just see how it wears and see if it helps prolong the wear of the makeup because it is supposed to be a gripping primer. The palette, I absolutely adore this palette. I love the look I created with it. Let me know if you wanna see more looks from this palette. The brow blade, again, I love this little guy. I just think they need to work on their colors a little bit. So I would go into Sephora and kind of swatch them um, to see what they're like. And then the dip brow pomade, I do like the look that this gives. You have to go in with a light hand and you have to clean this up. Um, you really do. And I would definitely recommend doing it before your foundation or else you're gonna get brown smudges everywhere because it just can sleep 
just concealer is like not enough to clean up the product buildup from this. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So we're gonna do a wear test mostly to see how this primer wears, um, but also the brow products are also super long wearing and waterproof, so I want to show you how they hold up throughout the day too. I'm gonna take some pictures of this lovely look and um, I'll see you guys um, a little bit later. I'll probably do a check-in for the primer at least um, in a few hours. All right, so we're kind of in my filming space right now, same space we were. Um, there's some natural light coming in. I also have my studio lights on. It is about 4 p.m. right now, so the foundation's been on for about three hours. Right now, I'm not really noticing much of a difference on either side. It looks pretty much the same. Um, around my nose, it's holding up about the same. I am getting some uh, dryness around my mouth area, kind of around here. I think that's just the foundation. I find it can sometimes emphasize um, some little dry patches. I do think it's a bit worse on the no primer side. Um, but overall, it's looking really about the same, so I don't really know if the primer is really doing anything to help longevity. Um, I think maybe it's too soon to tell, so um, I will check in with you guys uh, a little bit later. All right, and we are back. It is the end of the night. It is uh, 9.54 right now, so the makeup's been on for like, nine-ish hours, a little less than nine hours. So, um, I have some thoughts. This is the non-primed side and this is the primed side and I feel like they look exactly the same. I don't really think that it helped the makeup stay on longer. In fact, my nose looks worse on this side. I'm gonna turn down the lights a little bit so hopefully you can see what's happening. So hopefully you can see my nose looks pretty cakey on the primer side. Um, and on the, I feel like it almost looks better on the non-prime side because it has just like rubbed off, but this is like caking and bunching up. So maybe it does help with longevity, I don't know. My mouth, my upper lip looks real dry and crusty, but just my skin right now and this foundation tends to do that just if I have extra dry patches um, and I wanted to see if this primer would help and I don't really feel like it did too much well zip down there is getting pretty crusty too my cheek area looks like pretty much exactly the same on both sides so I don't really feel like this helped with longevity at all so yeah so right now where I stand on this primer is save your money. I don't think it's worth the hype. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but like, I mean, it didn't really hydrate my skin and it didn't really prolong the wear of my makeup. And like, that is the two parts to this primer, hydro grip. And I don't feel like it did either of those things. So yeah, I would say pass on this. I, I will keep testing it out. Um, I want to try it with some more like dewy foundations to see how it wears with those. Maybe it'll improve the um, wear time on those. We'll see. I feel like you might like this if like, let's say you have oily skin um, and you want something that is going to give you a little bit of a dewy look, but not feel greasy or too slippery on the skin. Um, you might like it then, but I feel like honestly, I feel like all the hype was sort of generated by um, their marketing really, and by the whole brand trip that they did. And I just don't feel like the product itself really lives up to the height. I think the Cover Effects Gripping Primer is better. I think it's more hydrating and it does actually grip and hang on to the makeup. The Gripping Primer mixed with a Dewy Primer is just beautiful. If you want a non-drying primer that will help your makeup stay on longer, highly recommend the Ula Hendrickson Banana Bright Primer. This doesn't really claim to be a long wearing primer, but I find it does actually make a difference um, in how the makeup wears throughout the day, so check that guy out. Um, but so far this is just like... I, I just don't feel like it really did anything. Um, again, I'll have to keep trying it out, but uh, as of right now, I'm not really a fan. The brows still look as magnificent and fluffy as they did nine hours ago. Both the dip brow and the brow blade are really long wearing. I've worn them like in the rain before, sweating, all that stuff, and they pretty much stay in place. So um, if you're looking for long wear brows, these two are quite nice. 
The eyeshadow still looks really bright and vibrant. I don't feel like it's changed. Um, this is a again a beautiful, beautiful palette. It wears well throughout the day too. As you can see, the shadows don't really fade and i've really been liking this again let me uh, know if you want to see a dedicated video on this guy i hope you enjoyed this kind of testing out uh some newer hyped products um these three i love i recommend the riviera palette the urban decay brow blade and the dip brow gel um i will the dip brow gel just is it's a little bit tricky to use um but i think once you kind of figure out a method and it's probably one of those things that's going to be different for everybody you can get some really cool like fluffy brows out of this i feel like if you already have super fluffy brows i think this might be a little bit too much i would go with uh something like the kush brow from milk that will just give you a little bit of volume but isn't going to be in same pigment like this guy but I do really like it if you have kind of my brow uh, shape amount of hairs you might like it and this just seems like a lot of hype and honestly not a lot of substance I hope you guys are having a good day or night whatever you're doing um, I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every week um, other than that yeah um, I think that's all I have for you. Um, yeah, I will see you next time. Okay, bye.